What's poppin'? It's your girl Hazel Lee, baby, and I just finished my interview with Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. Today's interview was good. I feel like I got a lot of things off my chest. I feel like we cleared up a lot of issues maybe from my past with Jason. You know, people got to know that I really do know Melissa Ford, and we got to go into some things that were real. Like today was, you know, open truth and honesty, and it was straight from Hazel's mouth, so tune in. What up, everybody? This is Jason Lee, and this is Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. And I'm Melissa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. Your boy Giovanni. Hold on. And we got the uh, one and only Hazel E. in the building. What's poppin'? Um, this is, you know, this is an interesting show because <laughs> there's a lot of interesting history. There's a lot of history in the world. Mm. So, uh, Hazel E., you know uh, Melissa Ford. Y'all know each other, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well. <laughs> Do you know Giovanni? I met yes. when I was with Yessie. That's when I met yeah. her. Yeah, Exes. Yeah, Yessie's Yessie, Exes. Oh, yeah. the first season. Yeah. The, the Yessie yeah. was on the show because you've yeah. been with the franchise mm -hmm. from the beginning. And mm -hmm. you, she has a restraint order against you. And yeah. That, that <laughs> and so and you know each other. And, uh, I never got to do the workout thing. The Oh, the and women I, defense yeah, thing. Yeah, y'all had yeah. went after that. So. And then we've mm -hmm. met before. Yeah, I got splashed okay. a little rock. So you. look, let's go through the, his, there's a lot of history in the room. Let's get through all of that. Okay. And then get caught up with where you are. Okay, so uh, we can start with mine first. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so we've known each other for, I don't know, several years. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. And it's been a journey. And we've had good moments and we've had clearly bad moments. Yes. <laughs> the world has seen, because you left Love & Hip Hop mid-season two, right? Kind of the end of... I still did the reunion. You did the reunion. Yeah, I, still, the reunion. I, still, yeah. I still stayed for a moment. So my first scene on Love & Hip Hop, uh, they put me in with Nikki Baby to talk about doing a deal or something and working with her. And uh, they didn't. I didn't know the show. You were, at that point, season two veteran. You had been through it. Your first season was crazy. You had uh, a lot going on. Yeah. And then here I am, season two, first scene. Lit. <laughs> first scene was our scene. Yeah. And uh, we had a moment that escalated and I threw a drink in your face. Yeah. Which I did feel really bad about. Just to, yeah, that drink was in your face. No, because I mean, I couldn't even see like low key. Like if you ever have alcohol thrown in your eyes, you don't really realize like it burns. Everyone's like, why don't you get up and attack him? Like shit. I'm blinded for this right. moment. Just trying to figure out what happened in, you know, in love and hip hop fashion. They escorted him off, and I'm running around the restaurant. Where he at? I'm finna fuck him up. She wants to kill me. And and then I. But let me let me say because I don't want to make a joke out of it. Um, you know I did feel bad. I actually called a couple of my mentors because I had never thought in life ever that I would be, that I would throw a drink uh, on a woman in her face, on television, ever. Had somebody told me bet all your money, I would have never. I would have bet because it would have never happened. And so I felt like, uh, you know, I. I felt really bad about that. We didn't get to shoot any more that season because you ended up leaving until the reunion. Right. The reunion, by the way, I was outside crying because I was so angry about the whole experience. And literally, I'll, I'll be honest, it was tears because it was just really frustrating. It's a rough show to do, right? Yeah, man. It's, <clears throat> these are the reasons why I frequently leave, you know? And I say, I quit loving hip hop. Like, I'm, I, I still say it, probably I said it this week already. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. because it pushes you to the point of like, of really snapping like I'm like I'm gonna end up in jail being on this program and it's gonna make me have an out of body experience mm -hmm. oh, there he goes what's up baby <laughs> her man just enters the oh, building yeah. <laughs> stood up to the table <laughs> okay so uh so go ahead okay. and um yeah I mean that reunion was crazy I mean and then you have to we hadn't made up at the reunion yet so our animosity was still real. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? People think, you know, the show is scripted, but mm -hmm. the feelings and the emotions that you're having in that moment with someone is real. So I was really pissed at you still. Mm -hmm. It took later time for us to run each to each other in real life. I think you saw the backlash that had happened for, mm -hmm. for yourself mm -hmm. and you actually apologized. And in that moment, I wasn't ready to receive it before, but in that moment, maybe because it came through a friend, Miles, mm -hmm. and maybe I was able to receive it then but people are like how can you be cool with someone threw a drink in your face Jason, and i'm like did you throw the drink because you really like because you couldn't put hands on her no well <laughs> this is why i told fizz because i had run into fizz at a party in calabasas mm. and he, he comes up to me and i had not even shot with fizz i didn't know really know him i of course knew him because we write about him 
But he he um, walked up to me and he said, bro, like, you, what the fuck are you doing? And I said to him, you know, because I have not really, we haven't talked about the whole details because I don't need to get into the details of random ass people. With her, mm-hmm. I don't owe anybody an explanation. <laughs> mm-hmm. But the person that I had this conflict with, right? You know, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. Everybody knows I'm gay. I am out there. I am open about it. Um, and like I said, I think I told Floyd, I think there's going to be a moment where, you know, the world's going to see a whole different example. Because I can roll with the uh, with the gangsters. Shout out to Rose Burgundy. And I can <laughs> and I can roll with, you know, I can, I can be in West Hollywood and do my thing. But mm-hmm. I think for me, it's the people that I'm involved with. I'm typically not dating guys who are openly gay mm-hmm. or have openly been out about themselves. Mm-hmm. And I think that you know, I was in a, my first scene with two veterans who had already been through that. I mean, when you go through one season of Love and Hip Hop, you understand how the audience is going to act. You know how to position yourself. You know it. I didn't know it. I wasn't prepared for shit. And so I think in that instance when a person's name was thrown out because they didn't see that, I had mm-hmm. fucking just like so many emotions came over me. It wasn't even about violence. It was just about how do I get the fuck out of here? Mm-hmm. Cause I almost quit the show after that. I was like, I ain't ready for these bitches. These bitches, this is some I'm shit. savage. I'm savage. I but take did, the, I take the darkest of the secret and expose it. But did mm. you feel that, did you feel mm. that, um, in that moment, what did you feel about that? Did you feel that well, you think that relationship was public? Everybody. Oh, the one that you were speaking of. Yeah. Eh, I wouldn't say, okay. How about this? I knew you were out and you were gay. I didn't think that was a secret. Yeah. If that was still a secret. That wasn't the secret. Okay, that wasn't the that secret. That wasn't it, no. Okay, so the T came into where the news on who it was. Correct. And at that point, I didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was. Like, you threw a drink in my face. I don't give a fuck what I say to you. But that would happen before that. No, that, I'm saying... No, I'm saying... No, no, the T, about- the T came out in the name in an interview later. Yeah, because I, did, in the cause scene, I didn't have any reaction. You were yeah. gone. No, but in the scene, that is what was said that created that experience. Yeah, and you were saying, you had said, you were homeless, you were this, you were that, you were echoes. And I was just like, oh, oh, well, how about this, motherfucker? When you was no. on the whoop de wop wop oh, and be, the whoop de wop wop then you, how about this? this? And then it was like, oh, she took it too far. <laughs> Having gone back over the history of your experience in the show, you, you are a savage in knowing how to use words. And... Uh, we'll get to this season because I'm glad that you're back in the show. I think the show needed you back. But I think in that moment, having not been experienced in it and not having, I've never, you know, in my whole life had somebody shame me for being gay or who I'm with or out somebody. Because, you know, I feel like, you know, we all out here, we know what we're doing mm-hmm. um, and we know what people aren't doing. And I think that, you know, there's just a line. Uh, but I learned in Love and Hip Hop, there are no lines. <laughs> right. zero. They don't exist. Nobody's no. safe. It's imaginary. Yeah. It's dangerous. So you guys are cool now. You're good. Yeah. I give her credit. She, um, cause you really don't know how to approach a person right at the reunion. Uh, you know, there were people out in the back telling me go in there and just drag her and drag her. I'm like, that's not my character. Like I'm, I have to own up as a man to what I did, whether mm-hmm. the audience respects her or doesn't thinks I'm soft or not. I ain't there for all that. I ain't there for the audience mm-hmm. to say, Oh, he's crazy. And this and that some people are, I'm not. So I felt like as a man, I got to take responsibility for me. And I did that. And mm-hmm. we had that moment at the uh, at the reunion. And uh, you you didn't give me no love there. Uh-uh, because I was still in my petty my petty moment. I was still in my, you know, fuck you. Like, I, like I don't hear you. <laughs> but I wanted to. It's because I didn't get to seek, like, full revenge. Like, it's unfortunate. I'm a Taurus. <laughs> um, Melissa probably can contest to some of these stories, uh, being that we have such a long history. But I seek revenge until I feel like I'm vindicated. I don't stop. It's a behavior that I'm trying to change, though. Where does that come from? That's the devil. No, but no, no. Let me. Ask, it's let, a Taurus. We're a bull. We see pray red. That shit away. No, when you're red, you see a bull and you flash, and people keep poking you and poking mm-hmm. you and poking you. Then it's like, all right, I was cool, but now that I'm poked, I'm fucking it up. And when I go down, I'm tearing it all down with me. Well, let me go it's back. A, it's a horrible, mm-hmm. you know. What I learned. I'm, well, let me let me tell you a story. Mm-hmm. So I did the AIDS walk a couple years ago. I told the story on the show, probably the only time I publicly cried because I ain't into crying. I got shot, didn't mm-hmm, cry. Brother mm-hmm, died, I mm-hmm. cried. That shit hurt. But but this, I cried about telling the story on the show because, you know, I learned in that experience that loving hip hop, television, social media has so much more far reaching influence than, say, us sitting at our home or whatever, right? Um, and you have far more influence in terms of followers than I do. So you have a bigger audience, you have a bigger reach. I was doing the AIDS walk and I went to the Apple store. And these kids came up to me and you had since did an interview where you talked about the scene and you put the name out there and all that. Um, and these kids were like, yo, um, you know, you're our hero. What am I your hero about? And they said, we felt that you were standing up for us 
in that scene. Mm -hmm. And of course I told him that I'm not proud of that moment. Like that was the moment that I'm actually embarrassed about uh, because I have learned since then having done the show, you could read, you could do all types of creative other shit, but you had already had that experience that season, you know, so you know. Um, but they were saying to me how their father beat them for being gay, shamed them for being gay on people at school, shamed them for being gay. And I thought about the person that we had talked about on the show or that had come out in this interview. And so did you, do you feel any sense of responsibility for people who may not be out or maybe struggling with living in their truth to own any of that? Do I feel bad about what? Uh, outing a person? Yeah. Mm, no. Um, I mean, I brought Miles and Milan on that same season to to make it okay to come out and be who you are in your skin. That was like the one of the most controversial storylines ever on Love and Hip Hop. And I had to fight for that one so hard because they did not see it. And I'm like, yo, there's a guy that's like straight rapper, girlfriend, sleeping with the guy. It's this down low thing in Hollywood that no one likes to discuss. And I really want to explore that on TV because it's real out here so i felt like i'm in with the lgbt community now outing that person i just felt like that person was already out mm -hmm. and from the relationship that you seem to have with that person i just felt like share with the was world it, was it was he not out mm -hmm. was well, my my whole thing was it wasn't out not out until after that it snowballed mm -hmm. for him and then well, sisters it's, got involved. It, 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 was snow, it snowballed. Stuff. It snowballed, you know, as a result of the scene. But it, it did. the thing it did. about, well, first of all, with Miles, we all knew Miles was gay. Like, I knew Miles was gay. I've seen Miles <laughs> I at the gay I did not club. know Miles. Milan no, Miles, I've, Miles got that. I, he no, might be but gay. But it look. ain't even about the look because that's kind of fucked up. But it's, <laughs> it's being honest. I've been at the club with Miles for years. <laughs> oh, look, he said. No, I've been, I've been friends with Miles for years. I mean, Miles was at the gay club, whatever. I think what that did, though, that storyline allowed the world to peek into the world of the guy who's not because when people were criticizing from not being out he wasn't like all the way out to his family mm -hmm. that's he living in his truth in front of the world so that's mm -hmm. the, the thing i would be clear because people were criticizing and saying it was yeah. fake but he really was not completely living 100 percent authentically in his truth right yeah i mean because i Still even asked him though. the other day like how so when you guys got in the bed and did that kiss like at at that point did you realize like what you were doing and he's still even right now, and I, I empathize with that, just being on season four, I've seen seen or seen or scenes already now that I'm like, I'm in here because of a bet. Like, you still don't know every piece of the puzzle, but of course, if you're laying in a, band, in a bed as a man and a man kissing a man, at some point that you there's cameras around, you know it's going to be out. I just don't think he, like you said, he was out to his family. And well, Miles My, don't want no pussy, but back to you. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> back to you. But wait, 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 what about him and Sunday? It, oh, that Listen, was the thing. Excuse me. Today is Wednesday. I'm Let's just keep saying. Okay. They were very. Man, that was probably, I don't know. Wow. I and the Bad Girls Club all. chick. The Bad Girls Club I don't chick he was um, Listen, in there with. I am doing this show on an empty stomach. I am going to get to you. <laughs> Lies. You just ate some Cheetos. But let me go. Let me go back. Want some okay. beef jerky? No. So, uh, so. <laughs> Because I know there's a Hazel E under Hazel. There's a Erica Adams under Hazel E. Yes. We all know Hazel Hazel E is here today. You are <laughs> you are ready. You are just Hazel E. But beyond all that, I know there's an Erica because I could tell you, having had that experience with you, having had that experience with you, having having since then reconnected and been around, there's a heart underneath the facade of Hazel E. Yeah. So let's get to that girl because okay. that girl had to think after seeing it all kind of going down, because I know like love and hip hop is all about, it's the battle, right? It's who's going to win this motherfucking battle. Mm -hmm. But you didn't regret at all somebody who doesn't have the courage that I do to be public feel that pushing them out was wrong. The Erica Adams, not the Hazel E, because it's okay to be vulnerable, baby. If you cry in here and Rose cry, now if we get Rose to cry, this show's gonna go viral. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. He said not today, but we might try it. <laughs> Amen. But um, does Erica Adams feel anything? I can only say no because I really didn't know he wasn't out really gay. Okay. I think a lot of men are already out and gay. Maybe they're not out and gay, but I feel like they already out. You okay. know what I'm saying? That's just right. how I feel. And I really. So you didn't feel like you were doing anything. Mm -mm. So for you, you didn't understand why the conversation went so left. No. It was I'm, like, what the fuck is this? Because I'm like, that was your. Okay. That was your boo. That, Allegedly. I, I mean, mm -hmm. well, if when, at the moment that we had the conversation, it was a thing you were in and. Me not being like, oh, this is because to in Hollywood, the gay thing is just 
It is it's what out. it is. Yeah. yeah. If we were in Texas or like somewhere down south, that it's like still conservative. That yeah. you still, you know, you know, what I'm saying like you have to, you know, kind Move of, you know, put, yeah, a little bit. But here in Hollywood, I'm just like, easy. Yeah. But you know what's crazy is I had never had the conversation with my family. Even at that point. <laughs> and yo ass went on TV. But I will say, but you know what I will say, but you know, behind the scenes, what I was saying to producers is I don't want to explore my personal relationships because my personal relationships are very private. You know, I may talk to my friends or, you know, I tell her everything, mm -hmm. but, you know, I'm very private with that part. And that part I did go into the show being very uncomfortable. So, but what I will say the experience did for me, it forced me to be open and honest with everybody. Like I felt like I was living in my truth in LA. Yeah. I wasn't living in my truth in Stockton. You know, but since the show, you know, I'll tell you how it all went down. So at the reunion, as it aired, I put all my family in a chat group and I said, hey, everybody, this is Jason from Love and Hip Hop. Tonight, you're going to see something at the reunion that you probably never saw. I'm available for phone calls. Ha ha. They were all like, oh, we love you. We love you. Love your shoes. Love your outfit. Then when that scene came on where we talked about it, it went like dead silent. Right. So I'm like, hey. <laughs> but all of my sisters called me personally to say, hey, like, do you like we fuck with you? And it was so in many ways that negative, if I had to find the silver mm -hmm. line and push me to be me all the way with everybody. Now I'm just yeah. out here. Yeah. Wilding. And it probably feels mm -hmm. better to be free. It does, because I've always been from a place of if you don't fuck with me, cool. If you do, cool. If you want to get money, let's figure it out. But if you don't want to stay, once they broke, stay over there. We're going to keep it moving. Push. But I but, you know, I'm glad that, you know, I, for the audience who's listening, uh, we were at a party and you walked in the party and I go, fuck you. I, when I got up there, they're like, Jason Lee's here. Miles like, hey, so let me tell you now. And Jason <laughs> Lee is here. And I was at that point. I'm not going to lie. It was for Jesse Smollett, and it was a performance for mm -hmm. him for that Lincoln event. That's right. And I wasn't going to let Jason, uh, Jason Lee have me miss Jesse Smollett you know, toilet on that stage. Okay. You know, and you, so <laughs> at that time, I, I was like, Jesse, Miss Jesse, or Jesse, I didn't say oh, you was twirling. She said that he did. He did a spin. I have the video. He did a kick. It was. <laughs> it was real. It, it was. Real, it, it was that. If you already know it was, what it, it was. Real, was. real Mac, <laughs> Maxwellish. It was, and I was not gonna miss that because uh -huh. Jason was there and I had animosity, and so at that moment the spirit was so light. I just went over and grabbed him like. No, Fuck no, you. Wait, no. Let, let me paint the picture. So I got, I got, I had a bottle of champagne in my hand, and so she comes over and she puts her arm around me. I'm like. <laughs> And so, you know, we had that moment, but it was good because it was good and it was irritating for two reasons. One, it was good that two grown ass people uh -huh. who never really had a significant amount of beef no. ever really just didn't really get to know. I each mean, other. I think a lot of our problems stem from my relationship with her and your relationship with her. And, really? you know, like you ride with your coming into that scene. This is my BFF. Maybe that was, yeah, but, but see, at the time, it wasn't even that for me. It was more Tierra always telling me to stay away from you. Get, catch, catch this moment, okay, because <laughs> we're in Hollywood. You know, the one thing about you is with your friends, why y'all are friends and why you had that relationship, that relationship is unbreakable. Mm -hmm. When it goes left, it goes all the way the fuck left. You do. Me and her BFFs, of course, I, you know, became privy to whatever you guys had before mm -hmm. the scene. So I'm going in like, ah, kind of feeling a certain way. You had never done anything wrong to me. But you were sticking a code. Say it again. You were sticking a code. I thought you said yeah, you not, the girl, not, not the girl code. No, no. I not mean, the not the girl, code. but it's a code. There's no, a the guy plug code. For your, girl code. Plug for your business. You know, plug I mean, code. of course, it was going to come to the girl coding. <laughs> but in the book of the code, I mean, you write for your friends. An enemy of your friends should be an enemy of yours. But the good part about mm -hmm. what I want the audience to know is you came over and we had a moment. And you forgave me. We, we cleared it up. And it's just like we had that one five minute moment in front of the world that still to this day, I was in London. They were like, you can't, can't go throw no drink. I'm like, really? Come on. But the fact that you were able to be open to us talking and having that conversation, I thought was really big of you and really big of our relationship to be able to start there and grow. The irritating part is that whenever we post a picture, everybody <laughs> expects you to punch me, me to throw something on you, us to hate each other. And people are fixated in us not liking each other. Yeah, they are. They want to see you not like each other because that's what you guys like almost introduced yourself as to the world. So that's yeah. what they remember. So that's all you want to see. I mean, but being like a bigger person and trying to, you know, be better would be to learn forgiveness. You right. know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. We didn't have that much beef to where that couldn't have been forgiven. It's like we had, not like we had history of doing each other dirty, backstab, mm -hmm. and you talking stuff about, it was never no you history. You didn't sleep with none of my men. I, I, I didn't, didn't sleep with none of yours. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was nothing. It was nothing like that. So at that mm -hmm. moment, I can say, that was a TV moment and gotcha. let that be there and let's move on. Let me tell you where I really was like, I'm fucking with Jason was when I was walking backstage at the Beyonce concert because <laughs> everybody knows that I'm obsessed with Beyonce. As am I. And 
he was coming from the stage and I was trying to get to the stage and he was trying to go backstage and we somehow switched and I ended up getting to watch Beyonce live in action giving lemonade on the stage and I was like Jason's my bitch like I was like it's it it's over like it, it, it's done so like that co it that stage yes nigga got me on stage but I mean it's, at Beyonce it's been all love lemonade. it's been all love from there I mean listen <laughs> it was a moment in time we don't need you know folks move on with your lives if you don't have enough going on let this go right? yeah there you go. Life is too short, man. It is. Okay. Yeah. So another seminal moment in my life was watching you two get together at Floyd's Strip Club when we all co-hosted. I, we were all on the same bill. All this history. All this. And you two <laughs> had a moment. And the thing about Melissa, you know her longer than I, she's not big on being vulnerable in mm. public. Mm -mm. You're not. I wasn't you, invited it, there. As soft as you are and passive as you are, you are also you also have a very big wall up and you don't like to let that motherfucker down. But I saw it go down. You two had a moment where you were talking in the club and you hadn't talked in years and you had some stuff go on online where you were attacked and you were attacked. Well, I don't know if you were attacked, whatever. Mm -mm. She wasn't attacked. Mm -mm. So you guys were sitting in the corner and there were tears and there was a lot of talking. What was happening? Because I wasn't there. Well, I mean, part of the reason why I don't express vulnerability is because of what happened between her and I. So, you know, I mean, I'll give her the floor. This is her interview so she can say what she thinks happened. And then I'll interject with what I believe. So what happens. went down with you? Y'all were roommates. I, mean, I think, you know, I'll start off by saying Melissa Ford, and she always knows, was very impressive to me from the day that I met her. I mean, I never seen a woman move like her, have a brain like her and have intelligence very, like her. Very, very smart woman. So, yeah, she I, she I cool. Mean, she no, good. I'm just saying like, I, I did the, I was the Hollywood PR chick. You know, I met her at a Nick Cannon while and out party and she was hosting it with them in Hollywood when I worked with Echo. And I don't know, we just like clicked and I was like, yo, she's different. Like she has a brain. Like you can't just tell Melissa where to go. Mm -hmm. Melissa gonna be like, wait, I'm, what? She gonna have five opinions of what she doing and not doing before she gets there. So being that we, developed this relationship we got bands we got bags we never slept with each other's ex-boyfriends we were real yeah, friends. We're friends we were actually like Cause, friends because in hollywood people are fucking they friends friends and we have never ever done that and so in that moment and me being the place i am and i know that we had a disagreement we were roommates moved out i i blacked out on twitter instagram wasn't even around then mm -hmm. that's how far we go back and in that moment when you brought us back together I know Melissa is not going to like crack a wall. So I know that what I needed to say to her, I had to tell her because mm -hmm. I don't want to hold it. And we're here in Hollywood. Like I love this girl. You know what I'm saying? Like I admired her. She, we did a lot of dope shit together. <laughs> like we were lit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And there were so many pieces to that puzzle that was going around that time. And there was animosities. I probably picked a side. Maybe she feels like, I'm not sure. And with that situation with Eva or whatever, we take it back that far. I kind of did some like, well, I'm just trying to get money with everybody type mm -hmm. thing. But mm -hmm. she was actually my friend. So in that moment at the strip. It was personal. Yeah. So, and it wasn't with everybody, but with her it was. And in that moment, I just felt like I had to let her know. Because it was a lot of people around. And I didn't want her to think that. It was anything but me being genuine and really saying like, my bad for back then. Like I've grown, like I'm not like that. I respect who you are, respect who you've become. I always admired who you were. Like you couldn't tell me that my best friend wasn't the baddest bitch on the planet. You know what I'm saying? Like, please, I'm a Melissa Ford. Like, y'all hoes, like it was always like that. I was always her cheerleader. And in that moment, I just wanted to let her know like, it's Erica, you know what I'm saying? And if you can forgive that situation and we both can move on for it. I would love to, you know what I'm saying? Pick your brain, have lunch. You're like one of the coolest people to talk to. You can actually, you can actually speak intelligent talk. We ain't just got to talk about what's on the shade room. You know what I'm saying? No, no. Or Vision. Hollywood Unlocked. Or Hollywood Unlocked. We can act. Melissa will have do a whole dissertation on a, a damn college book or something. And I'd be like, Girl. We sat through them all. Yeah. We sat is, through is your every hands in your pants? Them. No, I was scratching my stomach. No, you don't have your hands in your balls. <laughs> I was scratching my stomach. And now you're going to touch somebody. Don't shake him after the show. After all, I was scratching my stomach. Your hand was in your pants. My hand was right here. Ugh, it shouldn't be anywhere near there. <laughs> I'm, I, I need to. <laughs> need to throw up Continue Okay. On. so Melissa in that moment were you able to receive it because I called Melissa afterwards and I'll just say I said 
I thought it was really big of you all to even be able to do it because there's, you know, with Twitter, of course, and what happened and, you know, you could talk about what happened, but it brought so many people into your relationship, right? Mm -hmm. With her and her relationship with you that it was good in that moment to see, even in the midst of all the people in the club, y'all were able to go to the side and talk, whatever. And there was a moment I saw, I said to her, there was a moment where I saw you weren't able to listen. And then I saw a moment when the wall came down and y'all were able to talk. So I'll pass it over to well, you. Well, the number one reason why I agreed to go and sit down with you in the club is because we were in Floyd's club and I'm not trying to have any kind of a spectacle happen in front of that man. <laughs> right. This is his club. I have the utmost respect for him. He was paying us all to be there. We were supposed to have a good time. So my, my personal issues with anybody, listen, I don't got to like you to make money with you. That's just the way that I feel. Church. So, you know, the only, the only reason why I sat down was because I was I was afraid of it becoming a thing in front of Floyd. Mm -hmm. That was the number one reason why I sat down because I I I was not open to an apology. Mm -hmm. I was not open to forgiveness. I was absolutely not. I felt like what you did was unforgivable considering the depth of our so friendship. So people don't know what I, I, I I'm going to get to that. Okay. Okay considering the depth of our friendship at one point, considering how much of a cheerleader for you that I was, considering how much love I put into the relationship, how much of myself I gave to our relationship, I changed because of what you did. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, cause the audience is like, what the fuck, Melissa, <laughs> what are you talking about? We did live together at one point. I was over New York. This was in 2008, mid 2008. And I wanted to try LA on for size. And so her and I were friends. She had an apartment. She was like, I can ask for a two bedroom. I'm good with the you know, management company. Cool. So we're going to do this. I'm going to try LA on for a year and see if I want to stay here. So I decided to live with her. And in my mind, moving in with my friend meant that we would probably have to kind of separate our lives to a certain extent because we can't like, you know, live together and just be all about each other. Like that's a, that's a recipe for fucking disaster yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And so I maintained my own life and part of my life didn't include her. And I started to feel like she was becoming very resentful about that, but I was, I, I didn't, I'm trying to balance it, you know? And then she decides that she's going to take a crack at, you know, a career in entertainment, rapping and whatnot. And when people get into this business and they get a taste of that drug, I see what happens to some, to a lot of people. And I'll never forget this. I'll never forget this. We were watching the Grammys and it was when Chris Brown and Rihanna were together, that infamous night. And you were going on and on and on about how great they were as a couple and oh my God, and this, that, the other. And I said, they are too high up on a pedestal. Watch that shit get get kicked out from underneath them. That night is when that shit went down between the two. I still get chills that I fucking predicted that shit on the night it actually happened. Mm. But that's fame for you. You know what I'm saying? Like you you, it, you could be built up and you don't know where some shit's gonna come from that's gonna just knock you out, like knock the shit out from underneath you. And it seemed like you lost focus as to who I was in your life. I don't give a fuck about Eva. Not in a rude no, way. And then I had the boyfriend, the Kavant. You couldn't stand Kavant. That, mother, them, that nigga kept it. coming over and eating all the fucking food <laughs> and paying no goddamn bills. And I was like, and I had to keep, because I'm respectful, I had to keep my bathrobe on and jogging pants in July. Who nigga, is this go, nigga? Uh, nobody. No, no, nigga, go no. home. Okay? You, just, uh, you keep eating all the hog moths. It's <laughs> shit. Okay? You like hog moths? No, <laughs> I don't know what a hog maw is, but that's a lot. It's a, it, it's a joke. It's like, yeah. it's from a comedy routine. But anyways, I say all that to say that I watched you lose sight of who I, who I was in your life. And you were giving all this time and attention to a bunch of motherfuckers who weren't going to be there. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they hadn't shown and proved. And I was like, you know what? Everybody has their journey. Mm -hmm. But then came the day where, you know, we, we decided that we weren't going to live together and whatnot. And we, we went our separate ways or so I thought that we had done so in a quiet way. And then one day on Twitter, you and a couple of other girls, you went from 9 a.m. until midnight. Y'all tweeted the most heinous, fucked up, horrible things about me that 
are even difficult for me to even fucking say. Who were the girls that I did it with? N- Natasha. N- N- Natasha and uh, De- what's, Denise. what's that bitch's Denise. name? Denise. Who ended up, who was on. They're both your friends now though, right? No. Oh, D- the, Natasha no, is right? No, no, I'm cool. I'm cool with Natasha and the only Wait, reason. Wait, Natasha the black girl? Yes. That married the white man? Yes. yes. They had actually, they were her friends that end up. No, Denise, tra- Denise was never my friend. Well, you know, Den- she, Denise Lawton is a mental uh, Yeah, I was like, I was Denise, like was, was, <laughs> Denise was never met. Well, she was Natasha's friend, they, actually. They were, they were they definitely were friends. friends. Okay. They, they were definitely friends. And I don't remember what happened with you and Natasha had something. And then they had, okay, so had came to me like I get it. the publicist, like, you know what I'm saying? Everyone's going to, it's still to this day, I'm still the same person. The publicist who knew how to make it go viral then is still the same bitch that's going to make it go viral now. And I knew that that, like I said, <clears throat> everybody has their the, upper hands in Hollywood. And when you piss me off at that time, on, but, but, I was in blackout mode. But, like, what, but, whatever, tripping. but whatever you thought, Whatever personal slight you thought I had committed against you, which as far as I'm concerned, it was just I didn't want to live together anymore, that we needed to live apart, did not warrant what you did. And furthermore, you used what was the truth of the matter, which was that we lived together to support a fuck ton of lies. You basically tweeted that I that I was servicing every athlete in every fucking professional league that the carpet was worn down to the nub from the front door to my bedroom when in one year of living together one guy came over he cooked for me and left I never brought my personal life up into the apartment I just didn't so you 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 just you almost fucking destroyed me mm, that like, means I'm a really big monster I'm just, I'm saying. I think you're giving me too much credit. No, I'm really, I'm really not. Because if I could do that, that means, Melissa, you done told me I got some power. That means I'm taking like I'm five not, bitches out by tomorrow. I like, come on, you can't give me that much credit. You can, you can, you could take it however you want. I'm just saying. Because I, I just feel like there's some no, pieces in this story you're no, not because, saying. No, 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 I'm talking. When you had left the no, apartment, you had also took the belongings that were mine, that were what, there. Took the what? Be- the beds, the stuff that were there, you also had the moved. bed. The bed was my. I took my. I took my bed frame. What are you talking about? An wait, old just, mattress? Just, like it was, just because it was, this was petty back well, then. I, I, that's what I'm saying. What well, you grown for it well, now? What I, was but, gonna, what I was gonna say was, but that's where the anger had came from. Was well, like what I, what I was gonna, it was an you old. Le- wait, it was let me. An let old me wait, hold on, hold on, you ain't hold on, taking my shit wait, when you go. Wait, let me interject. Like, let me interject and say that the thing about a wound, because we talked earlier about me getting shot. When the wound happens, you gotta try to repair the wound because if you keep ripping the bandage off, it will. It'll just cause more stuff. The thing I will know, I will say I know about Melissa is I, I know that one, I know that your relationship was real at the time. Yeah. And even from talking to you it was real at the time. Um, and it was a deep relationship where you guys had grown really cl- close. And for her, I know that when she grows close, it's b- hard to trust people. And I know she trusted you and you trusted her. And so all the details of what happened, I think, you know, yeah, the audience will sit back and pop popcorn, but I know that you both are bossed up enough in your own right. Now you've gone through a lot more public scrutiny and dealing with the public in a different way than say maybe you did when you guys were friends. She had been through years of dealing with this and shit. And social right? media, when Melissa Ford was like the hottest chick on the planet, the social media, what all we have mm-hmm. is MySpace. Mm-hmm. Now it can go, you can go live, go Instagram, Insta Snap, Insta thing. So everything is instantaneous. So now being famous is a little bit even worse. Like then you had to pick up a tabloid to find out somebody's mm-hmm. news. So you had a little chance to clean it up or make it dirtier. Now it's what happened. So, right so the reason well, why there I brought- was no way that, they, that Twitter existed and Twitter, it was every blog picked up the fall, the, picked up the story and the lies. And I'm not, and, and you could, you could spin this any way that you want to. And, you know, and, and, and just, and you know, it's not about me giving you credit of being able to do that. I'm talking about the fallout. I'm talking about all the, the public humiliation I faced. Melissa, for- I crashed on a whole ATV in Dubai, busted my whole face open in front of the world. They said I lied and faked an accident where I almost died to get a nose job, baby. Like you preaching to the choir. But you get that now. Now. Right. And so you had that and experience. And back then, that- hold on, I got it back then. Like, bitch, you do me wrong. Do you forget what I can do? But do you feel that it was more of you? This is what goes back to what I was saying earlier about the 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 scene that we had. Mm-hmm. Do you? Because somewhere deep in either Erica Adams or Hazel E, there's the sense of needing to win the victory, right? Yes. And so, do we do that? <laughs> <laughs> Why you said that before? You know that. It's every day in our life. What you talking about? Listen, I fuck with Rose. We gonna we gonna go. We had a good time in Vegas. We are gonna keep going. Okay. <laughs> So do you feel deep down that there's the need to win at all costs, even if it hurts 
somebody or a relationship that you value. If I was Queen Elizabeth. I'm talking about Erica Adams. Because you know what? You got the rough rough exterior, but you do have a heart No, I do. When it comes to Melissa's hurt, her hurt, I feel bad for. Okay. Because I do love her. Like, I still say I do. I did love Mm -hmm, her. mm -hmm. I do love her. I think she's a phenomenal woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My actions being bratty, being... You know what I'm saying? Like, ah, I, bu- I put you on blast. I'll tear your ass down. Like, that's... That's the that's defense. The, that's the that's, defense for me. I get it. And and um, that's why I want to keep the conversation because yeah, I but know... For, but for, like, Melissa, I can't say the same for Masika. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but for, for Melissa, yes, like, for her... And so my question to you, Melissa... And that's why we came to her because I could have just... Not like, come on, all the girls from my cast are there. All the other bitches. You didn't have to. Ha- you guys I didn't, didn't have, have to talk. To, I could just be super lit. So, but I cared enough to try to not make the encounter awkward. One, not embarrass myself in front of Floyd Mayweather, who did just, you know, give us a great stay. A lot more whatever, work to do here. You know, and then, but for her, I'm like, I owe that to Melissa. So for you. I, that's I, not for everybody. I think I'd ask you, Melissa, like, when do you start to be open to forgiving and if not rebuilding what you guys had at least be to be to a place to where you know you can allow a person to be forgiven because she doesn't have to apologize you don't have to forgive and two grown people can say fuck y'all until we burn but you know i grew a lot being able to re-engage hazel erica girl code inc um so I did that for my own personal growth. When mm-hmm. when do you forgive? Um, it, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I really, do, honestly, don't know. I don't even want her to waste the energy on forgiving because yeah. for me, it won't be. It's look, Melissa. You know, I loved you then. I think you're incredible now. Whatever you you do in life, and I I pray and wish the best, like to the top of the stars for you. You know what I'm saying? But Thank I you. won't hold anything that happened between like it's it that takes too much energy Mm -hmm. and you did you know to again give you credit you did say you know i know the time coming up to that show that's your house that you created together you've always been sensitive of that relationship and the history and the timing and Mm. you know so and did did that come from you having now gone through a public relationship with cat williams and all of what that brought the loving hip-hop and dealing with the audience who likes you on monday then on tuesday fuck you bitch die um (laughs) what what is it that's humbled you a little bit from where you were because you've always had this thing in you where i'm gonna get it period Mm -hmm. no and i mean well not period i'm gonna get it at any cost (laughs) fuck it I'm no, I don't over. fuck people's no, men, no, not no. married husbands. I have well, a not, li- yeah, I have a limit on to that. Any not cost. that part. Yeah, I'm but, saying that like you will partner with the right people to make a move. You will fall out and really steamroll over the motherfucker to keep moving. Yeah, because you are on your hustle. Yeah, because I don't. I didn't build girl coding. I didn't build Hazel E. I didn't build the rapper, the author, the book. The, the, you know the brand the, the brand yeah the shoes whatever i'm doing right the hell putting together love and hip-hop hollywood i didn't build it on my back right. i built it on my brains going to college getting an education hustling being doing pr running plays getting those connections and really doing it so if i built it i'm not gonna let nobody take it i didn't come from i might have dated cat williams but i didn't get put on from who i dated mm. i didn't get a career because somebody yeah, was sleeping no, with no the point i was and, making and was so, you've gone through it now yeah. publicly and right so now i won't let nobody take it mm-hmm. i'm like it's you know i'm still hungry but <laughs> have you been humbled at all through all of it of course i've been humbled I mean, how when you wake up and the world calls you ugly every day, how much more humbling can you get? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, at a certain point, you have to just be like, I'm human. I bleed red. I have feelings. I have emotion. I can understand. I Like, to, you know, to my boyfriend, I have to be empathetic to him. Sometimes I lack compassion mm-hmm. because I have this exterior up. But at the same time, I have to sometimes let it go down and be empathetic because mm-hmm. it, we're all human, you know? But... At the same time, I ain't going to let nobody punk me. And so <laughs> when does that wall come down? What brings the wall down? I could say something like my grandma. Okay. You know? Why? Because uh, she probably only has a couple years left longer to live. And my grandpa died a couple years ago. So she can't walk and she's um, bedridden. But mm. she looks forward to seeing me on TV on Mondays. Oh. So and then you- she has a lot to say to me. You know, she's a tourist too. And mm. she can't move or nothing, but she can talk. So, <laughs> so she motivates you? 
motivates me and also um, if I'm acting out of character. She bring you back down she, to earth. She bring me back down. And you so she can humble you. You can have a you, know, you can you can say that it's true, right? You hear girl mom. I mean you talk to her not that often. I think I'm the humble post. Oh my humble, really. <laughs> So I'm did you humble you I'm nine I'm ninety nine percent clock with you all every day. So <laughs> let me tell the audience some tea. <laughs> I <Please> say <laughs> I'm in I'm in <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> I'm in Vegas. Uh, Tori Hart calls me. Kevin Hart's <laughs> wife. She's with ex-wife. She's with uh, Hazel and Rose and their squad over at the hotel. I'm somewhere else. I don't even know who I was with at the time. He was at a table gambling. No, but I was. I had a boy with me. <laughs> oh, okay. Right? Yeah, you did. You had like three. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> oh no, right. sorry. I had Keith, <laughs> Keith, Keith works for us. Never mind. Boy. So anyway, we're there chilling. We decide we're going to go out. So Floyd calls and says, doing girl collection uh, tonight or tomorrow or yeah, tonight. Like, who can we get? And I'm like, well, Hazel is in town, Melissa, Claudia. There's all these people, Alexis Sky, blah, 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 Erica Amanda, Nikki Baby. So we put it all together. Maybe it was the next day or that day. I, it, it was, was the next day. It was really fast, though. Yeah. Everybody agreed to do it. Everybody came. I'm at Floyd's house. We chilling by the pool. I get a call from Hazel. Hazel says, Rose just got in a fight. I said, no, he didn't. There ain't no way he got in a fight. All y'all had to do was go to the hotel. Shit. <laughs> The fuck you mean he got in a fight? She said, no, Rose just got in a fight with uh, Sincere. Sincere show. Sincere. I said, Damn. there's no way. Okay, now I'm looking at footage. There's <laughs> footage online now. There's a okay. fight. So I'm like, how y'all getting a fight checking in the room? Like Y'all just got to <laughs> check in the room. So me and her are talking. So she says to me, don't worry about it. I said, Floyd, this is going to be back to Floyd. This is going to be back. She goes, Floyd ain't going to find out. I said, if it I happened. Was, I was already checked in the room, actually. You know what I'm saying? Under Mayweather Productions. He was <laughs> oh. he was actually getting kicked out of his room. So you know I, what I'm saying? So so I, so he already so, had a little animosity. So I, so I said to him, I said, Floyd, so she said, Floyd's not going to find out. It's already over. Everything's gone. I said, no, Floyd's going to find As I'm talking to Hazel, the phone at Floyd's house is ringing. And they're like, who? Erica and who? And they do Jason is somebody at the hotel named Erica. Hazel, I got to call you back. And I already got back to Floyd. So what happened with you and Sincere? Because Sincere was with you on season one, and then he left the show. So I'm thinking, okay, well, it's not a show thing. What what happened? Well, Sincere started on Young Berg's couch in 2006. So let's be clear and pinpoint on his date because he likes to pinpoint. Everybody wants to pinpoint. We'll start at he was sleeping on Berg's couch from Chicago. He had a little BMW. He used to try to keep clean. And I gave him his first girls and his first promoters to start the Sincere show. Got him on season one. And I feel like, you know, put him with Echo. Just put him mm -hmm. in the mix. Like, you won't like, I resurrected. We on whack ass Berg. You know what I'm saying? Brought his little late ass homies from Chicago. Where is the loyalty? That is where my problem is. Where's the, where's the thanks I get? So cut to, he's not on the show no more. We see him out. He always gives me the mic, always was showing me love until Rose Burgundy. And now he can have the mic again. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Mm -hmm. You're walking through the... So I'm walking through the casino, right? Bam, you yeah. feel me? Walking through the casino. I got, got, my, got my little, you know, Hispanic partner with me or whatever. You know, he ain't really no fighter like that or whatever, so... I walk past, I see Sincere, I'm at the check-in desk, he arguing with the with the lady at the, you know what I mean, behind the desk, so I'm like, I'm like, hey, what's up, bro, whoop, whoop. he shook my hand, he like, oh, whoop, whoop. you know, we locked up, so then, you know, he, you know, he think he on his, you know, his, his pimp shit, as he say, you know, or whatever, you know, so he tell me like, hey, hey, come, hey, move out the way real quick, but he like, move me with his hand out the way, I'm like, bro, you could, you know what I'm saying, you ain't gotta move me with your, with your hand, bro, like, I've been knowing you for years, if you want me to move out your way to talk to somebody, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just ask me. Don't put your hands on me. So he walked up. He was like, so what you saying? I said, I said, well, we can go outside and go get in because I'm not about to do all this on <laughs> that camera. Went from zero to a You know what I'm saying? I told, I, no, I told him straight up. I said, we can go outside and get in. You know what I'm saying? He was like, I'm not about to fight you. I got too much money. So mm -hmm. the lady at the desk, she had just checked us in. So she telling me as fast as she checked me in, she going to check me out. So now I'm, I'll turn around while I'm talking to the lady. He didn't fire it on the man, my little Hispanic boy. You know what I'm saying? So I could have hopped in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Packed him out. We could have maxed him right then and there. So I'm letting them get their little one-on-one -on -one or whatever. So he, he look he look up at me and he swing on me. I duck, bam, I hit him with two, boom. Then you see how the, you know, you see how the, the camera stops. <laughs> and they you see how they, they stop the video, then they they rent it back. But I'm still locking with them the whole time and they still didn't have the whole footage. Cause Where we still you from? we got out we got out from the lobby to the motherfucking parking lot. Where all right? are you from? 
Oh. I'm from Inglewood, California. That makes you know sense. When a, when you know what I'm saying? I'm real life blood out LA, here. You know what I'm saying? When an L.A. gang member tell you a fight story, it's the best because they paint pictures. Yeah. And can, I, can, I, can, I, can I just tell you who was filming all this? You. Michael Blackson. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I text I text Michael Blackson. I said, nigga, how you turn into TMZ? Hey, 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 hey yeah. When we went to the Tupac premiere, he gave me major love. He was like, hey, man, you did your thing. He said, your boy got slid out of slippers, but you, <laughs> he said, you, you, he said, you was with him all the way to out the door. Then I still told him, I said, nah, he let the security take him out, take him back into the uh, hotel. I said, nah, we still running this. It ain't over. We were 100 fades. And then we y'all came back. back. To back. And you came back. We put everything on Hollywood Unlocked because that's what we be being. We, our business yeah. is your business. <laughs> this boy got and we slip. put it. And then all these gangsters started. It became a gang thing where all these gang people became. I mean, interested. he put he put something like you know his boy Alshon Martin came on onto on blog. On, I think it was y'all blog page and it said, oh, if you got into it with him. Now you into it with the Hoovers. I got relatives from everywhere. You feel me, like. Mm. Like how RJ be feeling, Mr. LA, like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm Mr. LA, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, you know, you feel me? But I'm Mr. Inglewood though, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody know my motherfucking past. Like, you know, I grew up in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Really mm -hmm. out here in the turf, in the trenches banging. You know what I'm saying? I'm a real street nigga that came up from the trenches doing this music, you know what I mean? Transferred over, you know, did my motherfucking producing, you know what I mean? Ghostwriting for Ray J, a lot of people that's unappreciative now, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it's just like, you know, I built my history to where it's like, shit, Sincere been knowing me for years. Ain't, ain't, I mean, I'm the person that, that that put that on that blog, you you into it with me, now you into it with my brother. I'm like, I'm the reason why you, you two, I'm like, you no, hold on, hold on, no. I'm like, I'm the reason why you two are even back connected. You didn't even have, you know, oh, I forgot about that, bro, when I talked to him on the phone. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So he apologized and all of that, the Alshon Martin cat that responded on, on the page or whatever. But, so you know, pretty, I told Sincere we can link up for a fact. So pretty much you and Sincere are beefing over uh, pushing out of the way. I mean, it got fit. Yeah. Listen, it's I, not even. It's about the respect more. It's not about the. It's not about the pushing out the way. It's about like, like, bro, like you. First of all, you from Chicago, my nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas let you get away with a lot of shit in L. A. But, bro, don't, don't, don't get it fucked up out here. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm really one of them ones. You know what I'm saying? I'm a goer. Like, and if I go, everybody gonna go. So, so his, you, bo his what, boy got knocked out. I say. Within 24 hours, that's being back from Vegas. You know what you I'm saying? You slid your homie for even getting in the fight. Oh, then, then I fought my homeboy for getting slid in his slippers and wearing slippers. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm be, saying? Be, so. while, you're, while you're going, because, yeah. you know, whenever you got a goer going, you just got to throw some shit out there. So Ray J Safari and A1 just had this big contest about who's... Uh, they can all sperm. get the fade. Wait, no, no, they, were, they were circle jerking. Let's they be know, be clear. Jason, do you know what the circle? I don't partake in those activities. But, but do you know what a circle jerk I do know is? What a, circle okay, jerk so is when men are standing around uh, jacking off together. So that's gay. Not, that's, that's, they, it, that's what the scene was, was a circle jerk. So they had a circle jerk and the loser had to work with me. So at that point, I'm like, you know, this is some, I mean, I, look, once again, it's no homophobic surge, but that's some gay shit. Like, that's a circle jerk. Like, Wait, because they went to the doctor to see who had the highest sperm count? They was... I mean, let me, let, me put the mic, let me put the mic back on me because me and Ray already had pre... We had premeditated... Like he already had this scene talking about yeah let's go let's let's go uh do this sperm thing whoa whoa we gonna me you and Safari gonna get a sperm count this this and that and I wasn't feeling it I'm like bro I like. Me going with you and another dude and going to go whack off to see who got the like. Sounds that's like just, you know, sounds I'm a, like I'm a, a good time I'm to a, me. A, you know that's a, that's a Jason hey. Lee type of situation. You feel me? Like that. Hey, you can I might just they, they I might just have to you. come back to the show. I'm like, dang, they should have just called Jason for this one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Added him on, but you know, hey, don't I mean, throw, don't throw me in that gay shit. <laughs> <laughs> you already in that gay shit. You open about it, man. You know, they just unopen about it. <laughs> you know, but I mean, you know, Ray been my boy for years, so for him to snake me like that, it's like. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? You know we gotta run that. Fade. Wait, snakes? You have what happened between you and him? I mean, you. you I mean, you met. You mean? You, Was it not getting like percentages or it's, credit? It's not, it's or not songs even. A, it's or, not about percentages. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. For it's, Giovanni it's, who it's, fell asleep, yeah. he took two guys to the sperm bank to so try you, to, to okay. wait. Listen, I'm trying to tell you to try to disrespect his girl. At first, he invited him to go, but he said, "What I think I hear you saying is you were like, I'm not with that." After I already did a commercial for your Scoot E bike, did Model and Flicks helped you helped you like basically build your damn company. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm helping you push your Scoot E bike, sending customers, doing all this. We all, you know what I mean? We really rocking like. And then you go over here and you go shoot scenes with niggas you don't even know. But you know what I'm saying? Like. 
And then at the end of the day, you disrespect my girl. You feel me? That was the main, all right, well, we'll like, we going to make the bet about Hazel, make the joke about Hazel because I didn't want to go with you to go do that. I felt like it was a personal hit towards me mm-hmm. because he asked me to go do it. And I told him I wouldn't do it because I wasn't feeling that mm-hmm. type of scene. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of scenes that I would deny. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? And if I feel like that, it's not it's not me, then I'm not going to go against, you know what I mean? I'm not going to sell my soul. You feel me? Right.